Hey everybody, it's me, Truck Doug. I am doing some TH400 stuff today. Um, I'll have to have this 4x4 reverse manual um, with engine braking ready by Friday. So I'm making pretty good time. Uh, he's got a six liter with a, with a cam and it's a very heavy vehicle. So we decided to preemptively uh, add a billet 300M shaft. And this time I went with FTI. FTI has these for a pretty good price. I think they're 350, um, essentially the same as the ATI. But the benefit here is that um, these are set up for the new style uh, that converters that people use for the TH400s where you exclude the front stator bushing and so cooler return oil can uh, more easily go back into where it needs to go. Um, here's the feed and then return comes through that hole there. And uh, kind of an interesting way to do it. Um, I had heard about this from my one of the local converter builders, uh, Adam at A1 Performance in Vancouver. They do a lot of diesel stuff, and uh, I've been really happy with them doing work on my stuff. Uh, they are very busy, and one of the reasons why I have decided to throw my hat in the ring to be able to do upstalls, downstalls, refreshes, that kind of stuff. Um, specifically on the 245 millimeter and um, 258 millimeter GM based uh, performance converters. He does everything, you know, big, huge, triple billet, you know, 4A RFE, you know, as big as that, this whole bell housing essentially, you know, 100 pound torque converter. I'm just messing with these little. 45 pounders and uh, he says that this is the way to go. This is the future and all of his T400 converters he sets up like this. Um, he says the transmissions will run 20 degrees cooler when you're really beating on them and uh, I believe him. So I have this uh, FTI converter here. This was an ESR uh, like a super budget converter, but you really get your bang for the buck with these FTI budget converters because you get a billet turbine hub um, and then fully furnace brazed. And what I'm doing is I'm adding an FTI billet back half. And uh, you can see I've added a bushing here to stabilize this uh, turbine. Put this bearing back in here. Um, because this unit is going in my car, um, I'm gonna take the Jake's converter out of here and use my own sauce. You know, what better way to test out your skills and to, you know, submit yourself to it. And so I've added that bushing just to center up that uh, turbine because it is no longer supported in the pump. You can see on the input shaft, there's no place even for that bushing to ride. Will it hurt if you double them up? Only if you're using an input shaft like this. This input shaft, unlike the ATI one, has no holes. So uh, there is no way for fluid to go from here to here. Um, I have seen and heard of people uh, cutting uh, the splines. In fact, I think that's what I spotted on. Right, this is the, the input shaft that came out of this unit. It was a TCI built unit. And you can see they were a little ahead of their time in adding a little bit of extra cooler flow, even though this has a return hole, they've added some more there, some more flow. 
and this was a double hole unit so kind of interesting uh just some some uh some snack for your brain something to think on deciding on which way you got want to go um, i would say that if you are doing a trans brake car or something that's going to spend a lot of time in compound low something that's going to generate a lot of heat then consider doing it this way um, and for those of you that are interested if you have a uh, an old esr that you're trying to convert to a billet converter that bushing that i used is a t or a 4l ade forward drum bushing um, i wish that it had a groove in it but i haven't found a bushing that will fit in t or 4l ade forward drum uh, to to have a uh, uh, oiling groove in it so i think what i'm going to do is on my units um the 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 uh input shaft that i have in that car is the ati style that has the hole here so i should be okay with oiling that um it's much like that other shaft that i just showed it has two holes and a through hole and then a hole before and after the bushing so it gets and it gets adequate flow um, but I think this is probably the way forward. I don't know the difference in strength between this shaft and when it has the holes. Um, I would imagine, I would imagine that a through drilled shaft would be stronger than a solid shaft. And that is something that I've talked about before. I think that the heat treating can make it all the way through the shaft, but when you add in the the idea of or you know a feature like a sideways hole that's a place where stress can concentrate um, i'm sure that's done before it's heat treated but still when it breaks it's going to break at that weak spot where there is lesser less material um, so just a little something to to snack on uh, things are going well business continues to be strong i am booked out until the end of November. I'm trying to work ahead. I think I figured out uh, my issues with my first converter that I built up. And uh, basically what happens, uh, what happened was when I was cleaning up that surface right there, I, I basically took off too much. And so I was between that and the turbine surface here, I ended up about 30 thou short. And that made it so that the turbine was running into the pump, especially at these edges here where I've got a little dab of weld. And so I've made some shims out of old bearings and ended up getting my 30 thou back that way. And that should work. I'm still going to cut down my overall height. I'm going to cut the back of this converter off right there and uh, set that up so I can mill it, mill these pads flat um, or rather flush. So this whole thing will sit flush down on there. And that should get me back down to the 6.8 that I want for my installed height, for, for my build height on my 4L ADE converters. Um, yeah, and then uh, to set internal play, I think what I'm going to do is, um, this is my little homemade fixture for setting up. Instead of just uh, using a uh, live, uh, live center, on this end and just jamming it in there as hard as I can and forcing the cover against everything. Now my live center will force against the, the, the uh, cover of the converter here, this side, it'll force that against the plate, keep everything centered. And um, I've got these two set screws that I can grab onto these flats here and 
basically I will be able to keep the pump up off of the cover, you know, 30 thou to get my internal clearance. Um, or that's, that's my hope. I'm trying to figure out how to make a tool to get down in there and to, you know, grab everything I need to grab and pull it and check that I have enough play in there. Um, if you guys have any ideas or know if there is a tool to do that, please let me know. Um, yeah, that would be that would be a handy little tool to have if I continue going on with building converters, being able to check internal clearances without cutting them open. And then when you cut them open, you destroy whatever you whatever evidence you had, anyways. Ah. <sighs> A lot to think about, but it's a fun little puzzle for your brain. Um, oh yeah, there's, I got something cool coming up. Uh, Tillamook High School, which is a city out towards the coast, famed for their cheese. Their high school has a drag racing program. How cool is that? I'm, I, I didn't know that any of that sort of thing existed. They still have auto shop and stuff like that. And uh, they've asked me to build them to, or rebuild their two drag racing transmissions. Um, they have two LS turbo cars. One is a fourth gen F body and the other is a 65 Mustang, all patina and neat. And, uh, they, they, uh, got their fundraising done. And so they're going to have me build one, uh, that doesn't have a, it doesn't currently have a trans brake, so I ordered one up from Extreme Automatics today. So I'm going to build that one here. They're gonna come and, you know, kind of check out the shop. And then the second one, I'm gonna clean up and just throw it all, you know, throw it all in a box and then go down there and spend the day with them assembling it and show them what goes into assembling a transmission, you know, trying to explain the Simpson gear set and how all that stuff works. and what you want to look for and uh yeah this should be kind of an exciting way to give back um they are going to be paying me a little bit of labor you know i'm gonna have to miss a couple of days of work so uh i'm gonna try and then try and give them the best deal i possibly can on both parts and my time but uh i still gotta eat and stuff but yeah that should be fun uh be a long hair old fogey teaching the youth <laughs> that's something i never really saw myself doing but uh kind of cool and yeah i'm excited about it for some reason so uh, i think that's enough uh yammering for today hope you guys are doing well and we'll talk to you later